everybody. Good afternoon. Let's, uh, today is the uh, 8th of May, 2017. Uh, let's uh, give the explanation about the 8th cyclical crisis happening in China. And uh, the, the title here to show that the 8th cyclical crisis mainly caused by the first overproduction. That is a very popular crisis happening in almost all of these Western uh, capitalist countries, especially in 1920 and 1970s, and 1920s and 1930s. I suppose that most of people notice that 1930s uh, uh, overproduction crisis happening in Western countries turned into the Second World War. It is a big disaster. And thousands and thousands of people die in the war. But when the overproduction crisis happened in China in late 1990s, what view happened after this crisis? So it's a very serious topic. So we, are, we should not only focus on the economic crisis, we also need to pay attention to what is the following happened after the crisis, especially when the governments take the measures to deal with such kind of crisis. So I give the title here as a kind of uh, dual options, means that at that time, when Chinese central governments deal with the overproduction crisis, the, the measures can be divided into two into twin part. One part is a uh, insist on marketization, insist on the market market reform. We can say it's marketization. Another hand is uh, trying to use the the government's uh, 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 how to say that the government's tool is a fiscal system and the bank system, that time still belong to the governments. And uh, so means that the macro level, the, the central governments still keep the market system doing that is a, a kind of going short. Follow the crisis regulation. And then another side, the governments use the government's hands direct interf interfere, so-called market marketization, and stop and even make the bankruptcy of some shareholders bank and the foreign capital investment bank. Means that the private bank in that time, in late 1990s, were enforced, closed down by the governments. And then governments, another side means they, they publish, they, not publish, they issue the government's physical bonds, direct invest into the infrastructure construction to drive the economic from the depression into the uh, growth. So that is a, one side means that governments still be in some kind of procedure of marketization. Another side that when they facing the, the, the challenge of the crisis, they have to change something. That is a very interesting phenomena. And uh, let's go down to our analysis of this, the, this time's crisis. We can first to uh, give you my main uh, uh, arguments main thesis. The key argument is that the overproduction uh, is uh, very popular in any industrialized country, not only in West, but also in East. So in, uh, in, in 1970s, after Second World War, when Western countries regenerate the industrialization. Very soon, from 1950s, 
Western countries regenerated deindustrialization. In 1960s to 1970s, the overproduction happened again, not as severe as 1930s, but it's also very uh, uh, serious and uh, aroused, aroused a lot of social conflicts in 1960s and 1970s. I have given the description last time when I gave the uh, analysis about the 1970s in China, what happened. I said at that time you can compare the China and other Western countries. You can notice that why in 1960s and 1970s Maoist, Maoism were very popular in Western countries. It's because of a lot of social conflicts and left-wing movements and even the guerrilla movements in these Western countries not caused by Maoism but it's, it, it, it's real it's reality caused by the economic crisis the similar crisis of overproduction in 1930s. Then after that from 1970s the Western countries started to transfer these uh, labor intensive low levels no high tech low levels industries to the so-called ally country means that these are Asian countries is a lie of Western countries is that that is uh, caused by the Cold War ideology so if you follow is a Cold War strategy lied by United States and other main Western countries these Asian countries can accept can take the industries from Western countries so that is why there is a four small tigers and the four small dragons and all of these tigers and dragons as the, as the follower country of Western Cold War ideology but caused by these countries are small these countries including of the area like Hong Kong at that time just uh, less than 400 well, less than 4 million population in 1970s and so the labor force in Hong Kong is very small and also there's no markets and like Singapore at that time it's only 2 million population also no, no domestic market and some these are, these are area and the countries and uh, small and even that you can find that a big, somehow big country like Indonesia but Indonesia large number of the population live in countryside it's a typical dual system the urban population is also very small so there's no big domestic market and very soon just from 1970s to 1980s these are small areas and small countries full of low levels industries and then they need to find a new area new country so from 1980s you can find a new trends started that is uh, these uh, these uh, foreign investments move out not only from these uh, small countries but also that's caused by the the 1980 1990s that's caused by the big change of the uh, of uh, sweat union and other socialist countries collapse and then there's some more room it's a big opportunity for the foreign capital they cannot they cannot they, they wouldn't like to just uh, stay in these uh, small industrialized countries they can take more benefits more interest from these uh, for the socialist countries and Soviet Union and also that is a uh, to to make more pressure to the competition in these uh, so-called East Asian countries that is uh, also in name of industrialized area so the, the the capital move the capital the liquidity movements accelerated so that is a new trend in late 1980s and the early 1990s the the capital flow became more and more popular phenomena in these East Asian countries so capital flow at that time few countries in East Asia notice that they need to give a kind of control 
So capital flow in 1990s became a key uh, concept of globalization. So since then, uh, last time I talked about 1990s crisis in China, I gave the explanation about how the uh, 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 WTO taking place in the year 1994 and 1995, and how that is NAFTA and the EU taking place in 1990s. It's all because of that they put originally, if you want the capital free flow in and out, that it's very difficult to negotiate to different countries. But in 1990s, because the capital flow became very popular, new trends in the world. So WTO emerging out as a kind of new international organization. And because the WTO, the, the main change of WTO, that is a, the, the Uruguay uh, uh, round, cannot solve the problem of capital flow, free, the free uh, enter and the free retreat. But when they set up WTO, almost all of this negotiation just uh, uh, gave up. And then capital flow became a kind of uh, popular concept. I remember country take this concept and then WTO taking place. So caused by the capital flow, immediately there is a new very serious uh, international crisis happened. That is the East Asian financial turmoil. So, and, uh, and, uh, but, but no matter what happened outside China, inside China started to acknowledge market system as a kind of new uh, goal of reform, of Chinese economic reform. That is in the year 1992 by the 14th Party Congress. So the mainstream of the policy circle in China, no matter it's a policy think tank or just the policy officials, they all believe that marketization and globalization will be our future. So no matter what happened outside of China, inside, the mainstream insists on their new goal, that is marketization and the globalization. So even in the 1997, in the summer of 1997, the, almost all of these East Asian industrialized small countries, not, some countries not small like Indonesia and Malaysia, all have fallen into the financial trap, the crisis. Then, but this, this big events taken by Chinese mainstream as a kind of events to push on the marketization of financial system means that the mainstream at that, at that time not very clear to understand what happened in East Asian countries. Even there is, at that time, even, even there was the financial crisis. But in China, it's just a kind of events to push the financial reform to the market system just a, a kind of event. Help them to understand we need to, to going forward of the financial, financial reform. The financial reform turned to the market system. So a lot of people outside of China, especially these scholars, they, when they do, their, when, when they do the, the analysis about East Asian financial turmoil, they think that China survived is because of China still have a capital control. And other countries all follow in, falling into the, the, the trap, financial crisis trap, is because of they have the system of capital free. Capital flow is a free uh, market system. So they still believe that at that time, China still be a very, con very strong control in the market system. No, at that time, just uh, China I said it's a misunderstanding because at that time mainstream in policy circle still insists on the re released control. So that is a 
when they facing the, the, the economic crisis, the mainstream policy circle didn't make the measures to, re, to slow down the marketization. So it's still very urgent to accelerate the marketization, especially the, 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 the shareholder system and the privatization and the marketization and the globalization, whatever these decisions still be very, very um, uh, important for the mainstream the policy circle. So that is a very interesting. And then, caused by the mainstream policy, China not only uh, have had the economic crisis in 1998, but also had another depression that in name in China, the depression in name of deflation. So we said in, in Chinese policy circle, we said, okay, since 1998, we have a four years deflation. And they never said that we have a four years depression. So think about 1929 to 1993 in Western countries, when they have the over production, over production crisis, they have a four years depression. At that time, they said big depression. But in China, Chinese also had four years since 1998 to 2001. It's a four years depression, but not in name of depression. They said we have a four years deflation. Uh -huh. So similar. That is a mainstream. But another side, because that when they encourage the, the, the state bank system going forward of marketization, and it's the, the, the bank system cannot carry out any government measures to deal with the financial crisis. Uh -huh. And so the government's got to use the physical bonds increase, doubled increase the physical bonds, and then lead the, the bonds investments into the infrastructure construction in inland China. So that is a not very clear to aware we got to use the government's hands to deal with the economic crisis. But fortunately, because of bank cannot work, the government's got to use the fiscal system and then fiscal system, I mean the, the bonds investments, mainly carried out by SOE, state-owned enterprises. So that is that no matter they are aware or not aware, practically they find the right way to deal with the economic crisis. So one side from the macro level, they still insist on the marketization and the uh, privatization to push the, 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 the economic reform into the Western styles, like capitalist country. But another side is because of that all the these reform just block the government's deal with the economic crisis and then they adopt the physical bonds investments. And then physical bonds investments solve the problem, stabilize the economic growth even they have a four years depression, but still have seven seven uh, uh, percent of the GDP annual growth. So at that time they said over uh, above the seven, uh, less than eight. So originally they have a nine percent of GDP growth annually, and then from 1998, caused by the East Asian financial turmoil, they have a seven percent. So decreased but not so bad. So that is that time we, we, we must understand these are two options, which one governments choose. Uh, as I understanding, government choose the market system. But fortunately, they still have the physical investments. And then, practically, practically speaking, and uh, Finally, because that most of these uh, investments cannot invest into the coastal area, because the coastal area at that time facing the, the, the uh, overseas demand decreased, 
So they, they don't need so many investments. So large number of the investments into the inland, and especially the, the Western China development and Northeast traditional industrial base regeneration and uh, middle China rising. These are regional investments to make the, these are low levels, these are backward area like Western China and Made China, they have a big opportunity for, the, for improve their economic situation. So they grow up more faster. So then after these uh, four years, um, the, the, since, the, 19, uh, since the, the new century, the, the, the regional gap rebalanced. So I said, no, no matter whatever, or whatever they, they, they talked, and they, they, they thought practically the, the outcome is much better than their thought. So that is a practical outcome. So that is a, we need to understand. That is my, my arguments. And uh, let's go to the first part of this uh, lecture, the background analysis. I have mentioned in the 1990s, because of the, the overproduction happening after the Second World War in Western countries, so they transfer out the physical productions, especially low levels, labor intensive production into developing countries. And then they, they try to maintain the high tech and the uh, machinery industries. But after 1980s and 1990s, large number of the machinery industries also transfer out. So the Western countries upgrade their economy from physical industries into the financial sectors. So the financial capitalization or the financial capitalism became a kind of new trends, or um, even new phase of the capitalist era, of the capitalist history. So that is mainly happening in the 1990s and the early 21st century. So from 1980s started, 1990s accelerated. In the first decades of 21st century, financialization or global financialization or financial globalization, whatever, became a kind of new phase of the capitalist history. Means that upgrade, the, the, the capitalist economy has upgraded their economic structure from the physical production into the financial production. And then that is a the, the main contents of the globalization because the, the currency is a kind of credit. The credit based on the political power. So this uh, polar uni power after Soviet Union collapse, this polar power only one, that is the United States. So when the United States take, took such kind of uni, universal power, it's a polar power, means that this country became the, the polar power of financial credit. So the, the biggest political military power can equal the biggest financial power. That is a new phenomenon internationally in the first decades of the 21st century. So it means that nobody, no power can block this unipolar, unipower to transfer the political power into the financial power and then to use the financialization to take large amount of the the interest from the world. So that is why this Western countries upgrade their economy from 
the physical production into the financial production, they can have a large number of the benefits, much, much more than before, than the 20th century. So the 21st century is a very uh, complicated situation because of the, they do, they did have the upgrade, but no power, no one can regulate such kind of new power. It's a, somehow like a big jump from this uh, Arabic uh, uh, legend, Aladdin, Aladdin, oh, uh, and his uh, park, a tea park, and uh, this, uh, when he touches the tea park, there's a big jump out of the tea park, and then nobody can control. So that is a similar uh, story in the 21st century. It's a, it's a kind of financial jump. Nobody can put, them, put this jump, uh, jump in, inside or go back to the, to the, to the tea park. It's because of the, the man touch this tea park, it's a polar power, uni, universal power. That's uh, himself. So he himself touched, and then he himself became a kind of big giant, and then control all of the the world. That is a new legend of the capitalist of the capitalist history. So that's caused by that, and uh, we must know that this a uh, this a uh, big giant can transfer out almost all the institutional cost to all of other developing countries, and the other developing countries. If you just join this globalization no way to escape. You only, one way that is a, you a very good follower to tolerate whatever you take, especially it's a big uh, cost. So, it's a, so if you have such kind of picture in, in front of you, and you got to think about where you can go, up to now, nowhere to go. That is our, 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 for few, our our faith. It's uh, unthinkable. And uh, but we need to know that how such kind of phenomena happened. And. Uh, Originally, when we talk about the, the Soviet Union collapse, we said this or the, the, the war, the, the, this after Second World War, this war can be have a kind of terror balance. It's because both of these are two big guys, all control very big nuclear power. They can destroy the globe many times. So that is a terror balance controlled by these two with a twin head power they can control. But one head managed. And then nobody can. And there's no terror balance, so there's only one uh, uh, polar power. So this uh, make they, they don't need s uh, have such kind of uh, 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 so-called uh, priority uh, advantage. So it's a United States as a big power, as a uni power, release control of the military information system construction. that many high tech in such kind of programs and then release control, make this uh, high tech um, into the market and then to be the industries. So this is a big chance for almost all of these uh, venture investments company. So they just uh, follow, in, fo fo all follow this uh, new policy and then invest into the high tech industries, that is in nineteen nineties. But it also means that they can take large amount of benefits because it's a it's a good chance for the for free riding. Most of these investments when they have a so called terror balance and then they invest a lot of uh, capital for the high tech, for the for the for the, the, the so called the highway of information. Many things invest and then all became the sunk cost. It means that if you take some, some part of the high tech for the business or for marketization and for new industries, you can immediately have a big return. So for such kind of up, uh, 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 chance, absorbed a lot of 
venture investments, these are in institutional investments fall into the the fall fall into the 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 the, the, the new room, and then to make the uh, uh, American became a kind of big market of the high tech of the new economy. So the late 1990s, there is a new concept created by United States by this economist. It's in name of new economy. But new economy, very soon, just a five year or six years, turn to new bubble. Means that then some people gave a critical title is a new economic bubble. Originally, it's a new economy, and then follow a bubble is a new economic bubble. This new economic bubble break in the year of two thousand one, and then two thousand one is a China enter China access WTO. So these are two events merged together to make almost all of the people believe that. China take the free riding of globalization because that China enter WTO, and then China have a so-called high growth. People believe that the globalization save China from long term from four years depression. In China, is in name of deflation, but indeed, it's not globalization save China. It's New economic bubble break. Make large amount of this surplus capital escaped from United States high tech markets. Invest into China to make China have a large amount of FDI foreign direct investments. That's because of foreign capital flow into China and then to have some high growth again. So not globalization save China. It's a IT bubble break, save China. So that is a the, the very interesting. That's we have we give a lot of challenge about this a very ideological explanation about this a crisis. So, um, uh, uh, this one, uh, it's a background of uh, it's an international background. And uh, you can see that in the 1997, uh, these uh, uh, countries fallen into the trap of financial crisis. Uh, that is, IMF uh, try to uh, deal with uh, South Korea, and uh, you know that at that time the, the the worldwide scholars nobody understand why there is a so-called financial crisis happening in, in this uh, newly industrialized area. East Asian area, so they give the explanation about that is uh, you have uh, some problem for your domestic institutions and then you have uh, some kind of anyway. But nobody think that is uh, because of a large number of the capital flow flow to from these uh, industrial countries because that is uh, the, the 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 capital in this uh, industrialization take the returns very slow. But if they invest into this. Uh, IT uh, industries in United States that will be large number of the profits come from the free riding because that large uh, uh, investments from the governments has been become a sunk cost and then they can have a, 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 a big return. So it's a American markets absorb a lot of capital flow from the East Asian countries, and that's because of a capital flow. There is a a, a, a financial crisis in East Asian countries, but at that time nobody gave such kind of explanation. So they only believe that is your own problem. And then the IMF come to these countries, negotiate with these countries' governments. You must more deepen your free market system. Means that originally your problem caused by the free market system. By free flow of the capital, and then IMF and the World Bank come here and then push them to deepen their reform for the market, for the the marketization, for the free flow of this financial capital. Certainly, make a lot of social campaign. 
So this uh, South e uh, uh, South uh, Asia, that is uh, no, that is a uh, uh, South Korea, and people lost their job, their job, so they want to renegotiate with the IMF agreements, and uh, they said I. I'm fired means uh, I'm F means I'm I'm fired again. So these are people they 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 crowded in in front of the bank, want to take their money back. But the bank has no no uh, uh, illiquidity, so this uh, bank got to close. And then as a Hong Kong means that also uh, attacked by these uh, venture investments. And then there's uh, some so many crises happened in these areas and then to make uh, at that time in the 1990s the China just uh, try to accelerate the globalization mainly rely on the overseas demand to drive the economic growth but when these countries all have the crisis the overseas demand large amount decline so decreased and then there is a no overseas demand increment so the, the Chinese GDP growth downgrade. So this, this uh, the background of East Asian uh, uh, crisis. And then look at this uh, Asian equity market. And uh, all from the, the, the summer of 1997 decreased. And uh, so this uh, uh, the Hong Kong stock market, uh, Philippines, and uh, Indonesia, Singapore, and uh, Thailand. Most of these, uh, these uh, countries' financial markets decreased. And a lot of people still size as the investors failed. And here's the GDP. You can see that Indonesia downgrade, and, uh, and uh, China also, so Hong Kong, a little bit early, a uh, uh, little bit bigger than China, but not so so uh, so serious. Indonesia, is Thailand, and these are, these are East Asian countries all have a very big decrease, de de decre decrease. So, and uh, that is international background. Now let's look uh, look at the the domestic context, and. Uh, and uh, I just uh, mentioned my arguments on the first page. The governments in the macroeconom macroeconomic level and have uh, some, some kind of measures, and, uh, but it's also reduce the local demand. So we should know that the overseas demand and local demand at that time all decreased, and uh, and the inside of, uh, inside of China, because of the 1990s, the Chinese want to accelerate the market system, and uh, they have uh, several measures trying to deal with the inflation in the mid 1990s. So when they said they announced, they have made. The soft landing at that time is a domestic demand decreased, and then the 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 price index also decreased because of domestic demand de decreased. So that's that is a they want to have such kind of phenomena, but they never think about there will be a kind of new uh, threats from overseas. So when the 1996 to 1997. And the uh, cost of by 1994, the uh, uh, high inflation is uh, more than 20 percent high inflation. So they have a uh, three years trying to reduce the inflation. So they have a so-called soft landing. But indeed, it's hard landing. The hard landing make the local demand large decreased. And uh, and the the and the uh, large decrease and also caused by the the domestic bank all have a lot of uh, 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 bad loans. So this uh, very complicated, lo the local situation make China going forward to the domestic crisis in late 1990s. 
So if there even there is no East Asian financial turmoil, even there is no overseas crisis, if you just uh, do the anal analysis about Chinese domestic economic events, you also can find that at that time in late 1990s, caused by these uh, very urgent market measures towards the market system, these uh, these uh, government measures, and also the government measures trying to control the high inflation, and domestic demand decreased, also turned China into the economic crisis. And uh, also because of the, the, the taxation reform, the rural area and uh, the large number of the rural industries closed down. Large number of the uh, non-agricultural labor lost a job. So their income decreased, also impact the, the local demand. So many different events, all are negative. So what we believe, what I believe that is uh, in late 1990s, even there is no foreign crisis, the domestic crisis should happen in late 1990s. So, uh, and uh, then in, uh, but nowadays people believe that the late 1990s Chinese crisis happened caused by East Asian financial turmoil. We can still acknowledge, we can still take such kind of uh, concept, such kind of idea, but we need to do more deep analysis about such kind of crisis happen. This is a crisis by two events. One is overseas, and that is domestic. And because that, we we have to understand domestic demand and overseas demand all decreased. Most of the time, in normal time, the people, I mean, in different countries, you can facing the overseas demand decreased. Or maybe you're facing another side, domestic demand decreased. But both happen. It must be a very bad situation. And in late 1990s, that is a, a, the, the situation China faced. So when they accelerate the marketization and the globalization, when they accelerate privatization and, and push the state-owned enterprises into private, into the markets, whatever they, they do, they did in late 1990s, all uh, what they think is right. So they want the, the, the Chinese economy as a Western economic system. Marketization, privatization, and the globalization, whatever. At that time, they are not very clear to aware these uh, measures is, uh, make China have a very serious danger. And uh, but when 19, 1997, the East Asian financial term happened, and then the foreign demand largely decreased, the central uh, uh, governments, some people did have awareness. And I remember that time, the Vice Premier Li Lanqing, in the early uh, 1998, I remember that's the January, he wrote a letter to the chairman of uh, Jiang Zemin to indicate that the overseas demand will be largely decreased. So he suggested, President, you should take some, some, some measures to accelerate domestic demand because overseas demand must be very much decreased. And then Jiang, as a president, take his responsibility and then gave this letter 
to the new premier. In the year 1998, Zhu Rongji just took the position as the premier. So he got this letter, and then Jiang asked him to do something to stable to stabilize the China economics in the 1998 because of 1997 caused by the East Asian financial turmoil that the, 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 the overseas demand will be large decrease and then how that we can stabilize our economic growth. That will be a, a, a big question to Zhu Rongji who just became the premier. So certainly that is a, a kind of that is kind of challenge. So Zhu Rongji immediately to organize these uh, governments, central governments, economic departments. And I remember that time is uh, more than 20 to 30 uh, uh, key persons from all the economic departments and have had a meeting together for almost 20 days or 30 days. I mean, it's a, it's a long meeting. And how can we do uh, some measures to save our economy? Not so quick, not so depressed, so quick to fall into depression. So that they do something very serious. Even that the mainstream is a policy circle still insist on the privatization, marketization, globalization, liberalization, whatever these decisions. But the the politician, the the leader, the political leader in in China, when they have very practical threats from East Asian financial turmoil. They got to deal with. They got to have some measures. So that is a we need to divide. And then the 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 the, the, the ideological uh, propagandas and whatever. So if if you are just a foreign scholar, you do your research, you read these documents, these uh, newspapers, these whatever. These uh, these 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 they have they even have uh, no any awareness about the real situation. What happened? But inside of the, these, uh, these uh, government's economic departments, they did have the instruction from the, the top leader. And then they started to do something. No one can have even the holiday, even, even the spring festival. They have uh, no, any, uh, uh, no any day for their recreation. They just uh, stay in the office, try to calculate how they adopt these measures to deal with. So that is a, we can say maybe that's caused by some kind of political regime. If you are a, a kind of a, a official in this uh, so-called uh, uh, liberalism country, you certainly you need to have your, your, your concern about your family and then you go, got to go back. But these people concentrated in some hotel and then for more than 20 days, you cannot go back to home. You must work in, 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 in this uh, room for the new policy and new measures. That is uh, somehow not in the, in the, in the, in the eyes of these, uh, these uh, foreign scholars. And they never think about that China can do things like this one. But it's, it's true. So and then they they immediately understand, and uh, both domestic demand and overseas demand decreased. The only one way is that Chinese economic growth only can be driven by investments. So we all need. There is a pop, very popular description about economic growth. They said, okay, economic growth driven by three horse. One is uh, mainly by domestic demand, and then combining by foreign demand, I mean overseas demand, and investments. So means that main fa factor is domestic, domestic, and then helped by overseas demand and investments. But now the main factor decreased, and then also foreign demand decreased, only one. So three horse, you lost two. You only have one horse, that is the investments. And then when they are trying to start investments, they found that almost all of these banks have a large number of bad loans. You cannot use a bank 
to increase the investments into the infrastructure construction, especially. The infrastructure construction cannot have short time return. I mean, you invest into the Air Force or highway or fast speed train, whatever. One year, two years, three years, maybe five years, you cannot have, you cannot return. You cannot have enough return to cover your cost. So maybe 10 years. So most of these are private sector. No such kind of ability to stand for more than five years or 10 years have the returns to cover your cost. No, they want half year or maybe one month. Private want to have a very fast invest and then very fast to have a return. So that is the difference. So you only one sector is a state in state enterprises. State enterprises take the physical bonds as the investments, the capital to invest into the infrastructure construction. Basically, especially when you, when you have a kind of national strategy, try to accelerate the Western China's growth. And then no private sector want to do such kind of program because Western China, okay, far from the coastal area. If you transfer the, the, the commercial goods, you need to pay more cost. So nobody want to do that. Only one sector that is state-owned enterprises. So and then it's happened to turn the 1990s marketization, privatization, globalization into state-controlled investments taken by state enterprises. That is what is public. That is state capital. So whatever you think, whatever you do your analysis, few people can understand it's not caused by some people mentally want to do something. It's caused by the crisis. So that is a, let me give you my conclusion. That's why Chinese always gave the crisis into two meaning. One is danger and that is chance, opportunity. Sometimes opportunity is more important than danger. When you're facing the danger and then what do you do? You followed, you do going short, that will be danger can be crisis. If you do going long, uh -huh, means that you, you, you anti the crisis. You take this opportunity for a kind of new development. So caused by the late 1990s crisis, the eighth secular crisis in ha happened in China. What China did in that time? China choose fortunately or unfortunately, right or wrong. I don't want to give you the judgment. I just say China choose the way to accelerate the inland China infrastructure construction. Finally, when they have such kind of investments, several years later, the inland China grow up. And then to have even more big room to contain such kind of big cost. That is why late in the, the ninth crisis happened in after the Wall Street financial crisis. China still can be a country maintain the high growth. So that is from the late 1990s. So I said the when Zhong Ji retreat, Wen Jiabao taking the place as a premier, he followed Zhong Ji's policy, still maintain the physical bonds investments into the infrastructure construction. That is also Lin Yifu. His uh, English name is uh, Justin Lin. Justin Lin, before he went World Bank to be the senior vice president and uh, the, the, the top economist in World Bank, he has raised up his suggestions to central governments. In late 1990s, one China facing the challenge, 
of the East Asian financial turmoil. He said, now we are in very negative circle. That is a twin supp uh, surplus. One is a industrial surplus. Another is a labor surplus. So we have a two surplus. And then we are in bad circle. How can we solve the problem? He said, use the physical bonds, investments, invest into the rural construction. He said, new rural construction. Similar as a Korean date in 1970s, 1980s. He said, we have a big room inland. We have a big room for contain the investments in rural area. So we can have maintain, we can have a 20 years high growth. So he said, we don't need to worry about this uh, crisis. So that is a suggestion. And he said, we, the only one we should take from overseas, that is the Roosevelt New Deal. So we can have a Chinese version of the Roosevelt New Deal, like 1930s in the United States. So whatever he, he talked, nowadays you can do your own judge. Is right or wrong? And after he came back from World Bank, he said, we can have another, another 20 years high growth because you have invested into this uh, infrastructure construction, means that these areas, inland China, nowadays is a better to absorb more investments. So he said, you don't need to, to worry about the inflation or deflation. You just do one thing, it's right. Let's keep invest into inland. So Justin Lin is an economist. I suppose that his suggestion more effective and more practical in the policy think tank. Okay, so when we have such kind of suggestions, we also need to know that it's a one the the in they they maintain to they insist on the privatization, marketization, the globalization, the liberalization, whatever these decisions in the 1990s, the outcome is very negative. In late 1990s, many factories collapsed or shut down, and a large number of workers lay off. So the total amount of workers out of job especially SOE, state-owned enterprises in reform, they kick out 45 million workers. Mm -hmm. That is the second large of, the, of China since 1960s. The first large is 1960, when Soviet Union retreat. No investments. A lot of factories closed down, and large number of the workers lay off. That is the first large number of the, or of unemployment. The second large is uh, the late 1990s. So 20 years, uh, no, 40 years passed, and then if you can compare with, uh, I can say that in 1980s we have a 40 million. That is caused by 1970s take some foreign investments from Western countries, and then you have a big death, and then you cannot keep your investments uh, increment, and then large, peop large number of people have no job. And also because of this educated youth come back to the urban area, so they also have no job. So put them together, it's a 40 million. But this time, it's a, almost you can see this is a, it's a Subject, subjectively, not objectively, subjectively, you push them close to these uh, factories and then to make these uh, workers lay off. And then you ask these workers to buy off their social welfare, only several thousands. Several thousands means that maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, just uh, several hundreds dollar or one thousand dollar or something like that one thousand dollar or or maybe less than one thousand dollar you buy off all the social welfare you cannot imagine that by one thousand dollar can you set up the the whole of your life of social welfare 
is almost impossible. But another side, let me uh, give you my uh, worry. Most of these uh, foreign scholars cannot do the studies on such kind of phenomena because most of these are 45 million workers, even they are out of job, but not calculated into statistic books. So if you only have the ability to read the statistics, you have no even no knowledge, no information about such kind of big events. It's very negative, but you have no information. And uh, nominally, they are not out of the job. They, uh, in Chinese, that is uh, so-called dai gang, means waiting the career. Means you still have a position as a worker. In nominally, you have a, you have a job. But then practically, you have a no job. And then every month, you have a, a little money for your survive means that you can buy a little food. But you have no exactly the salary. You have little money. It's a some, something like a pocket money. And even that some factories ask you, every morning you need to come to your, your workshop. Stay there and read some documents or read something. That means that give you the chance for training. So they have so many titles, so many topics. And also the government still asks the bank, state bank, give the loan. That is a salary loan. Means that these bank, these factories not closed down. They still still be there. Alive. But no products. So many things happened in China in late 1990s. Not like East Asian countries when they have a financial collapse and then the, clo the, the old the factory closed down and all the workers go into the street and then they have fightings. Not like Western countries, not like these uh, East Asian uh, industrialized countries. It's a special Chinese system. They still control these, uh, these factories. So the workers not nominally not out of job. So you cannot just read the textbook, it's a statistic book to, 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 to to know that maybe that uh, these uh, these years the unemployment rate less than six, but indeed maybe it's a uh, half, maybe forty percent, maybe uh, anyway it's much much higher than almost all of these uh, these uh, Western countries in 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 new century. You know that in 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 twenty ten or twenty eleven in Greece and Spain and whatever they have a. Uh, uh, Italy, they have many people out of a job. You can see that it's a 20% or 15%, or but it's a all in calculate, calculate into the stat books. And then you can easier to, to do your analysis, but you do the Chinese studies, you cannot have the data. So this data, not exactly uh, 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 correct. And the, but a, a lot of uh, policy uh, uh, researcher, they talked about the total uh, out of job, total waiting job, and total uh, 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 half pocket money drawing the training programs all put together. It's a 45 million. You cannot see their, their unemployment. So that is, that is a very uh, uh, interesting research uh, uh, event. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, one, one thing is also we, we should calculate into the, in, into the uh, crisis, that is a bank reform. And uh, before 1997, the, the most of these, uh, these uh, uh, big bank in China owned by the state, and the bad loan uh, percentage, one third, and that is uh, in any uh, Western system. If you are, if such kind of phenomena in any country under the Western system, only one outcome. 
going bankrupted. So the old Chinese bank at that time need to be bankrupted. And because the bad loan is much, much higher than the, the self-capital, you have your, your original self-capital, that is a, 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 according to the Basel uh, first, you need to have at least 8% of the fiscal capital in, in the bank. But if you have a 30% bad loan, means that much, much higher than 8% of your capital, means that you go, you go to bankrupted. So any bank lower than 8% must be bankrupted. But in China, few scholars overseas carried out the research on this, this very special events how China deal with such kind of more serious financial crisis, much, much ser severe than any East Asian financial terminals countries. S almost the same year, in 1997, all of these Asian countries, they fall into the trap. All bank collapse. But how China deal, deal with such kind of problems? Okay, let's give you an explanation after our break. <laughs>